Is it a pinch or a half teaspoon? Hold on. It's a punch. It's a punch? A buckle. A no, pinch. A splint. A pinch and a... A grunt. A grunt? Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I have another recipe from What's For Dessert. It's my banana sesame cream tart. It's so delicious. It really over delivers in flavor and I love the proportions of it. And it's just kind of a really idealized version of the classic banana cream pie, but so, so much better. I just really, really like this recipe. I really like banana flavor, but I don't love banana texture of the actual fruit. So this book really celebrates banana flavored desserts. Sorry, David Tamarkin, friend of mine, not a banana lover. But I like the flavor, I just don't really want the texture of the fruit. So I played around a lot in the book with banana flavored things. And with this recipe, I really wanted to do a spin on banana cream pie, but not the kind of banana cream pie that has sticky, wet slices of brown banana in the bottom, because it's just not my thing, I don't really wanna eat that. And I didn't have a lot of prior associations with banana cream pie, which proved to be a good thing because it meant that I could just kind of like do whatever I wanted and have that be my version. So this is really more of a tart than a pie. So I make it in a nine inch removable bottom tart pan. So you have a really nice proportion of crust to filling. And really importantly, it has a sour cream topping. So I love, love, love the combination of bananas and sour cream. It's something my grandma used to eat and like make for my mom with like a little sugar sprinkled over it. It's just so good. This is sort of a spin on banana cream pie. So the filling is not baked. The crust, however, I bake because as much as I love the idea of no bake, you pretty much always have to bake a crust, even if it's a crumb crust like I'm making here. So I'm starting with graham crackers. You could also use vanilla wafers. For the crust, I'm also gonna use unsalted butter, melted and cooled. I have a couple tablespoons of granulated sugar. The other bit of granulated sugar will go into the custard. Salt, toasted sesame seeds go into the crust and then more gets sprinkled on top. And then for the custard, I have two medium bananas, preferably overripe. So if you can wait a little longer, this, these could be a little more ripe. You kind of want like speckles on it. Then I have cornstarch, four large egg yolks, heavy cream, sesame oil. This is like my secret key ingredient here. It really brings so much pure sort of roasted sesame flavor to the filling. And then for the whipped topping, I have more heavy cream and sour cream. As far as special equipment, the only thing you'll need is a blender. I'm using a hand blender. My default in the book is a hand blender because so often when you're baking, you're already like putting something together in a bowl or a saucepan and you can just blend directly in there. But if you only have a standard blender, that's fine. Then you'll just need a nine inch removable bottom tart pan. This one has a fluted edge and that is so you can pop the tart out of the pan. Other than that, you'll just need a couple bowls and a saucepan for cooking the filling. So now I'm gonna get started on my graham cracker crust or vanilla wafer crust. I have six ounces of graham crackers and I'm just using plain like honey grams. If you wanted to make this recipe gluten-free, you could just use a gluten-free graham style cracker. Technically it's not a graham cracker because graham means wheat, but that's an option. Seal these in a resealable bag. I often have like one bag that I keep for doing this because I make a lot of crumb crusts and I just reuse it as many times as I can. And then I have a rolling pin. You could use like the bottom of a saucepan like this and crush that way, but a rolling pin I think is a little bit easier to use. This is great with kids. I say this, I'm always like, this is great to do with kids. I don't bake with kids, never done it before, but if I did, I would probably have them do this. So you wanna crush until you have fairly fine crumbs. In a food processor, it's really easy to over process and what happens is you get like a wet mixture that doesn't hold its shape in the pan and gets hard rather than like crispy. So doing it by hand, you're really never gonna like over process it, but you could under process it. So I like to go until I have really fine pieces and no you know, larger bits of cookie or graham cracker. I mean, this would be okay if you wanted to stop here, but you'll have a little bit of a, of a coarser texture for the crust. I'm gonna go a little bit finer. One thing you can buy is graham cracker crumbs. It's an amazing product, it's so convenient. So if you can find those, then that's amazing. You can skip this step. 
I should just get like a huge thing of it and keep it in the freezer. So this is mostly very fine with just a couple little crumbs. So the crumbs, not dust? You'll never get like all dust from just doing it by hand, but you want dust, mostly fine crumbs, and some larger pieces. So it's no big deal. Sesame seeds go in the crust, that's one tablespoon, and then I'm gonna save more for adding at the end on top. If you have a sesame allergy or you don't like sesame flavor, that's fine. You can either omit the seeds and the sesame oil completely, or a thing that I think is a really nice swap is peanut butter. So you can add like some very finely chopped peanuts to the crust and then finish the tart with them. And instead of adding sesame oil, add a tablespoon of smooth natural peanut butter. I did try that version, it's delicious. What does the sesame seeds do in this crust? The sesame seeds are gonna add a little bit of texture and also just some a little bit of sesame flavor to the crust. So whenever I'm doing a recipe, if I'm working with a particular ingredient or flavor, it's like I like to add that in a couple different places so that you're reminded it's not just like, it doesn't feel as random that there's some sesame oil thrown in. Two tablespoons of granulated sugar. One of the reasons why a graham cracker crust works or any crumb crust works is because you're using butter and sugar to bind it together. And what happens is as you're baking the crust, even though the, the cookies themselves are already cooked, that butter and sugar is mingling together and like hardening and that's what's holding the crust together. So the little bit of sugar is important. I'm adding, oh, I almost dumped the whole thing in. I'm adding a pinch of kosher salt. Mix that around, then my butter. It's like a little chilly in here. So I melted this butter maybe an hour ago and it's already solidified. Actually, I actually think I need to melt it again. It should be melted. Melted but cooled. It's only taking like 10 seconds. So butter goes in. So if you have a food processor and that's your preferred way of making a crumb crust, that's great. Just combine everything and process. But I like doing it by hand. So I'm gonna use a fork, stir it all together. And then I like to actually further rub the mixture between my hands to make it really uniform. And you want something that looks like wet sand. So this will break up any large clumps and just get the crumbs evenly coated in the butter. So I like to go around the perimeter of the pan first. So I'm gonna transfer about half of this mixture into the pan. So it's helpful when you're pressing in a crust to have a straight-sided measuring cup like this, a one cup measure. And what I do is I scatter about half of the mixture evenly around the sides of the pan, equal distribution for the most part. And then I use my measuring cup to press it firmly against the sides. And then I use a finger to kind of keep the crust from extending up, up and up above the rim of the pan. So this helps to compact it. And I found that with a crumb crust, the more you kind of like mess with it and try to like make it perfect, like the going you know going back over the same areas like multiple times it doesn't really get better so i think you should try to kind of make a single pass with it and then just call it a day and you can see that i'm angling the measuring cup a little bit so it fits the angle of the sides like it's not totally straight the thickness is probably about a maybe a quarter of an inch or slightly more but it's kind of like whatever fits in your pan whatever half the mixture pressed into the pan is is fine so then with the remaining half or so of crumbs that goes right into the bottom. And then same thing, I scatter the crumbs around, but now just the bottom. If you don't have a straight sided dry one cup measure like this, you could just use like a water glass. Anything with a flat bottom and straight sides is fine. Okay, and once that's pretty much spread around, I go in with the bottom and just flatten that in. So now I have this really even, pretty compacted crust. This looks great. Was that a turkey? Mm -hmm. There's literally a string of turkeys walking in a single file line. Do you see them? Mm -hmm. This is ready to go into the oven. My oven is on 350. Even with any kind of pie or bar or tart with a no-bake filling, I still bake the crust because it's that contrast between a creamy filling and a snappy, crunchy crust that I really, really want. It's not worth it to me just for marketing purposes to be able to say that the whole thing is no bake. No, it's, the crust is baked. The filling is no bake. But just trust me. I trust you. Thank you. I put it on a baking sheet because the crust is a little delicate. And so just to avoid having to mess it up as I take it in and out of the oven. And this will bake for like 13 to 18 minutes and it's gonna get dark around the edges. It's gonna smell really toasty. The crust has been in for about 14 minutes. Oh, it smells so good. 
The edge is nice and dark brown, and when I press on it, it's set. The filling is a very, very thick sort of banana pudding. So I'm going to cook it on the stovetop. For that, I have a small saucepan and then a bowl just for transferring the hot custard so it doesn't overcook. The first step is to mash my banana. I need about a cup. So at first, when I tested this recipe, I was like, can I get away with not blending it? And it's just not like so pleasant to have little pieces of banana in the custard. So I use a blender to get it like totally silky smooth. So at this point, you don't have to mash this very well. You just wanna kind of break it up so that you can measure a cup. So about two medium bananas should equal a cup. I might need a little more. All right, I think that's close enough. So I have my saucepan. You assemble everything for the custard in the saucepan and you're not gonna do this extra step of tempering the eggs. So I'm starting directly in here with my four yolks. Then I'm going to add a half teaspoon of kosher salt, a third of a cup of sugar, and three tablespoons of cornstarch. The eggs are going to thicken the custard, but it's really the cornstarch that is going to make this custard be able to set and be sliced. I want to whisk this together. Start slow because it takes a little time to incorporate all that dry stuff into the yolks. Make sure you get around where the sides meet the base of the saucepan and you get any trapped cornstarch or sugar. You can see that the mixture will grow pale and it's very thick like this. So you just wanna keep whisking until you have a ribbon. So I'll show you what that looks like. Just will take about a minute, minute or two. So you have this thick mixture that runs off the whisk. So typically for a custard, you might see like half and half for milk. I'm using heavy cream because I want all of that butter fat in there for richness and also to make it really thick. So I have my heavy cream. I have additional heavy cream that's chilling and that's for the topping. So I'm gonna whisk this in and make sure as you're whisking that you're getting into those corners so that there's no trapped egg mixture. In fact, it's not a bad idea to take a spatula and really scrape around those edges. Now I'm going to add the banana. And now it's time for the blender. So the blender is going to make this really silky, get rid of any texture from the banana. This is why I love an immersion blender or a hand blender because it's just like I'm already in the saucepan. So it's so convenient. I'm ready to cook the custard now. I'm gonna bring it over to the stove. When the custard is cooked, because it's a thick custard, if it were to stay in the saucepan, I risk sort of overcooking it and getting some texture in my custard, which I don't want. So I'm gonna quickly transfer it to this bowl and then whisk in the sesame oil. I'm gonna cook this over medium heat and it's gonna turn into a very, very thick mixture. And so because there's all that starch in there, you do wanna whisk constantly. And I have the heavy cream and the banana, so it's already starting off pretty thick. And basically what I'm trying to do is bring it to a boil. I want to activate the cornstarch and of course cook the eggs. So I'm just gonna stir constantly, and this will take a few minutes. Whenever you're cooking like a custard on the stovetop, a pudding, a curd, it kind of seems like, like nothing happens until something happens, but eventually there's a change that like happens pretty fast. Now is when I'm gonna start checking for bubbling. So I wanna make sure that this mixture is at a boil and it's looking nice and thick. So I'm gonna stop whisking for probably five seconds or so and see that kind of gurgling. Yep. That is how you know it's at a boil. So I'm just gonna whisk for another, 10 seconds or so, and then take it off the heat. So now I'm gonna pour this custard into my bowl. And I'm, I can scrape around the sides, but I don't really wanna scrape the bottom because in case you're working in a pot that has thin walls or a thin bottom, there could be some curdling, especially because this is a sort of a thicker custard. So it's just best not to really scrape too well across the bottom so that you don't have any like little curds of custard that could ruin the texture of the filling. So now I have it in my bowl and I'm going to add my two teaspoons of sesame oil. So use a toasted sesame oil so you get the best sesame flavor. Oh, yum. I love having such an incredibly savory ingredient in such a small quantity and it adds so much flavor. So go ahead and whisk that in. If you did have any curdling, 
it's okay because whisking the oil in will help to smooth it out. If you feel like it's really lumpy, I would take that blender again and buzz the mixture. So this is going to cool and set really, really firmly. And now I'm ready to fill my tart. So this has, for the most part, it's cooled. Looks great. I'm just gonna pour this in. All right, so this, oh God. So I'm gonna fill this right to the top. So it should use pretty much all the custard. And now I just wanna smooth the surface. Whenever you're doing anything with a pudding, as the pudding cools, if it's exposed to oxygen, it will form a skin. So like a sort of like thin dried out layer on top. And I wanna prevent that from happening. So I'm going to take a piece of plastic and I'm gonna press it directly onto the surface of the custard to eliminate air. We wanna chill this down so that the custard sets and then I can you know, top it and slice it. I'm not too worried about it softening the crust because we baked it ahead of time. I know it's gonna stay crisp. So I'm just gonna throw this on a plate and then put it in the fridge and maybe in about like four hours or so, it'll be cold and ready to top. How long has it been chilling? Probably about four hours, four or five hours. So the tart is totally cold and set and the last thing to do to assemble it is to whip my sour cream and heavy cream and top it with my toasted sesame seeds. So you could use a hand mixer to whip the sour cream and heavy cream, but I think it's doable by hand. So I have a half cup of sour cream and three quarters of a cup of heavy cream. So use a large bowl. And I just love the tanginess of sour cream against the bananas. It's, there's something that happens, I can't quite identify it, but now it's like I don't really wanna make a banana dessert without some kind of sour cream component because it's so good. This is totally unsweetened. I'm not adding any sugar to this. I'm just gonna whip this with my whisk. And I just want soft peaks. I don't really need to go any firmer than that. That amount of sour cream thickens the cream and makes it easier to whip up. Here, I'll come around. I want you to see, I have to hold it down low, but I want you to see the technique. Here, I'll go over here. Oh God, don't see how dirty the floor is. How does it feel to be on this side of the counter? I don't like it. It feels very bright. Use a larger bowl than this. Please don't ask me to turn this over above my head because I'm not going to do it. I feel like you're wanting me to ask by I don't know. I'm not. No, can't really do it with soft peaks. So I'm just about there. I am saying soft peaks. I hope it says soft peaks in the recipe because I'm not totally sure. I'm going to uncover the tart. So I have a nice firm set to the filling. Now, as you maybe noticed that the filling has taken on a little bit of a slightly unfortunate beige color. And that's because of the banana in there, like banana browns and you leave it out. So I like to just cover the whole thing with the cream mixture. Then I have a spoon and I like to just go in and spread it, but as sort of little as possible. And finishing touch is to top it with more toasted sesame seeds. I think it kind of has the look of something you would find in like the, the glass case at the, you know, at the front of a diner or something like that. It just looks really nostalgic. To serve it, I'm gonna pop it out of the pan. So just kind of gently push up on the base. I love how you get that fluted edge with the crust. Okay, time to slice and taste. So when you cut, make sure you're cutting down all the way through the graham cracker crust. Well, some of it broke off, I lost part of it. I need to cut another one. All right, these slices are really not <laughs> coming out nicely. That one's good enough, don't you think? Mm -hmm. It's a little soft, could it? Sit a little longer, sure, but I don't care, I'm gonna taste it. Okay, so you have to definitely like banana to like this dessert, but it has such an interesting base note from the sesame. Plus I love that kind of dissolving crunchy texture from the crust and like that toasted sesame flavor kind of hits you a little bit later. Like you get banana first, it's really good. Mm. So good. I love the kind of like nostalgia of it, but I think it really does improve on banana cream pie. There's none of those like wet slices of banana, more crust to filling, great balance from like the tangy sour cream and the toasted sesame oil. It's so, so good, a little bit special. We're definitely gonna bring you more recipes from What's For Dessert. So thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.